Good day, everyone. Uh, this is Herman Potrita speaking. I am the CEO of SIW Certification, the certified body for company certification in South Africa, accredited by SANAS nationally and also the International Institute of Welding uh, that represents 56 countries worldwide. Thank you for joining me with this uh, first of webinar that we what we tried and we're gonna submit today and the basis for today is uh, ISO 3834 certification and why quality matters more than ever before. So before we start I hope that everybody can hear me clearly and uh, yeah. just a little bit of housekeeping for everybody to understand what, exactly what's going on. Uh, please switch off your cell phones or put it on mute. Uh, mute your microphones during the presentation, please, uh, just to minimize the background noise from everybody. Uh, there will be a question and answer session after the presentation. And also please make use of the chat option in your bottom bar on the screen, on the Zoom screen, so that you can post questions during the presentation. If there's no time to, to ask the question, we will be able to answer the question and maybe help you in future with that. Right, the first thing that we're gonna see, can everybody see? Huh? No, it's not. Safety. So, SIW certification realizes the impact of COVID-19 today that is having a big influence on our businesses and currently in South Africa and worldwide and are holding these webinars to assist and help during this time. In this particular webinar, the focus is certification of companies and to show how to boost the credibility of the welding industry in the market on, and to make it a must-have and not as supposed to be a nice to have like in the past. Research also has shown that life after lockdown will see a rise in local, which means that the local supply chains and products will come to fall due to the producers and manufacturers having greater trust in their ability to main supply of quality products. This is very important. Certification is therefore key to show quality and transparency and in, in, in gender trust in South African and other industries. Why do we promote the ISO 3834 in South Africa? A few reasons why I feel that the ISO 3834 certification can have a major impact in our local industry and to be able to compete with the first world countries worldwide and why we as South African Institute of Welding Certification promote the system is how to improve the safety and quality of welded products. That's the bottom line of the ISO 3834. Secondly, to enhance the use of our local industry in manufacturing and maintaining of equipment and production plants. Very important, maintaining. We sit in a scenario nowadays where we have to maintain plants that's over 30 years old and we have to get to a level of competency to to get those and to keep the the, the welded products and the weld uh, uh, industry on that high level thirdly i think one of the most important reasons is to improve our credibility in the export and local markets and grow the gdp of our country a very important aspect of ISO 3834 is the building of quality into the product instead of inspected into the product. In the past that I can remember of, there were numerous situations where the product spent more time in the inspection area where it's been allocated in manufacturing areas. There was a dedicated inspection area where the product was inspected and it spent time in that inspection area longer than it spent time on the manufacturing line because of all the defects that was detected during the inspection time and then the repairs and adherence to the certain quality requirements. 
that was put on the table and that was agreed. As an example, you can see two pictures at the bottom of the slide. Both wells are unacceptable. With the wells on the left, very obvious because it's visual, you can see everything, you can see the spatter, you can see the quality of the well. And on the right, you, there will be a world that will, on face value, value, be acceptable to most of the inspectors, most of the people. And they cannot detect the lack of penetration and fusion on the bottom of the world, below the world ran at the top. What is the situation in South Africa today? The question has been asked. The AIA is involved. So where does it fit into the whole ISO 3834 scenario? Currently, the pressure vessel industry has to comply with the PER, as you know, the pressure equipment regulation, and also to related safety standards such as SANS 347. Now, everybody talks about these two specs or the two standards. SANS 347 is the categorization and conformity assessment criteria for all pressure equipment. And I don't know if you know and see and hear about the CAT, CAT 1 material, CAT 2, 3, and 4 material. This is where the SANS 347 is playing a big role. That's by categoriz categoriz categor categorizing the, 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 the vessels in a certain category of criticality and safety. According to the latest SANS 347, which was approved um, in the last quarter of 2019, the manufacturer or company has to be ISO 3834 certified as one of their mandatory requirements, where this was only an optional requirement in the past. And this is why it's another reason why the ISO 3834 has been seen as a major factor in producing quality products, especially, especially in the safety critical component field. What is ISO 3834? So this is a question that everybody, you know what, if you've never been and worked to standards and procedures, this is a question that you will ask yourself. What is ISO 3834? Now, ISO 3834 is a standard covering the quality requirements of the welding activities. Welding activities is not only the activity during the actual welding that takes place on the shop floor. There's a lot of activities that happen, and that will include the welding activity and the weld activity during fabrication. And these act welding activities also have to be managed. And this is why the ISO 3834 standard has been um, developed. While everybody is of the opinion that if they are ISO 9001 certified, the selling point in the past everything that they will produce will be of high quality. Unfortunately, that is not the case. And a lot of people will understand that. ISO 9001 is a quality system and it regards welding as a special process. And therefore it has to be controlled and managed in a specific way. And it will also complement the ISO 9001 system if it's implemented correctly. To be able to produce acceptable product, certain checks and balances have to be applied during the manufacturing process to ensure that the product that is manufactured complies with the necessary requirements set during the agreement between two parties. If this is implemented and maintained at, at the necessary standard and level, this is exactly what the ISO 384 will do for you. It will give you a quality product. Now, if you look at the typical manufacturing process, sorry, the slide is very busy, but it's a very, very important slide. This illustrates the whole manufacturing process. And to simplify the diagram is to divide the manufacturing process into three stages. The first stage will be the input of requirements. This is the requirements that will, there will be certain requirements from the client. There will be standard requirements. There will be specific specification requirements that will be mandatory 
and which has to be highlighted during the tender processes and the tender stages, right at the beginning of the pro project, not halfway through the project, not at the end of the project, but right in the first instances and the first quarter of the, of the, 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 the start of the project. The second stage, that will be your area where you can see the management responsibility, resource management, manufacture of welded product, and measurement analysis and improvement. This is the control of the whole manufacturing process. At this stage, there will be numerous people and actions that will take place that have to be managed correctly. And that is typical on the workshop floor. From supervisors, welders, inspectors, inspection companies, outsourcing to subcontractors, everybody will be in this area and that will fit into the stage of the, 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 the production. The third stage is the outcomes and the output, what you got out of the, 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 the whole manufacturing process. Is the client, the first question that you can ask yourself, is the client satisfied? Does the product that has been produced comply with the standard and specific, the specification requirements? Very important because there's manufacturing standards that require certain things and you have to make sure that you comply with all these specifications and regulations and requirements. So all in all, this whole slide is basically a compression of the whole manufacturing process. And it, to me, it's a very important slide, especially the input. This is where you, you, you basically the foundation, put the foundation, I've got the foundation, foundation for a good project. If you don't know what you want, it's very difficult to get to the right outputs at the end. Sorry, I just wanna. Sorry for that one. It was just a little bit of finger trouble on my side. Now, we move to the next slide. The ISO 3834 system. What is this about? The whole ISO 3834 system is divided into six parts. And into, in this six part, they cover three levels of control. Part one is the introduction to ISO 3834 standard and requirements. Also a comparison of the three parts of certification, part two, part three, and part four. And how to select the appropriate part for your manufacturing process. It is important that you understand exactly why and how you're gonna implement the ISO 3834 system in your manufacturing process and in your company. The part two is comprehensive quality requirements. These requirements covers the manufacturing of safety critical components, for example, pressure vessels, pressure equipment, and nowadays certain critical railway components. Part three standard quality requirements covers equipment such as structures, bridges, like the picture behind me. It's important, it's also safety critical, but this is not as critical as pressure vessels. So, and it is almost the same as part two but there's some kind of leniency in the part three, if you, if you look at them and you compare it with part two. Part four covers products where the criticality is almost non-existent and covers high production products, mostly automated, for instance, automotive parts, where the first of a kind will be accepted and approved in a production line. It's difficult to take each and every component that you're gonna manufacture off the line and look at the world. So this is where you, as first of a kind, accept what you, what you, what your settings, what you put on. And this is why 90% of the time, this is automated. Part five covers the standards and specifications which are necessary to conform to, 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 to claim conformity to quality requirements of ISO 3834. 
if you work in ISO 3034, and if you look at the standard, there's a lot of references to other standards and ISO standards. And this is where, in part five, you will get a list of all these standards and specifications that you can reference to and what you can look at while implementing ISO 3034. And then lastly, part six is basically a guidance document for the implementation of ISO 3034 system. Firstly, as a standalone, if you're a small company and you want to use it as a standalone, you can, you can take it as a standalone because it will give you all the quality areas. If you look at part one and you add and combine part one with the part that you want to, 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 to look at, you will be able to use it as a standalone system. Or you can use this as an integrated quality management, a part of an integrated quality management system that that's already exists at your company. Then the following areas will be assessed during the certification process. And there are basically four, 14 elements covered in the ISO 3034 standard, which covers the manufacturing process right from the start, from the tender process of the project up to delivery of the final product and the necessary documentation that have to be de delivered that has been agreed between the manufacturer and the client. So it's a full circle of manufacturing that you get. And in these, in this uh, 14 elements, you can see that we're gonna cover subcontractors. What is about the subcontractors? So subcontractors has to work to the same standard as you as the main contractor. But fortunately, they don't have to be certified to ISO 3084. You as the manufacturer will be the responsibility person responsible person and you have to make sure that they adhere to the ISO 3034 part of uh, the, the requirements of that, that, that specific part. We look at welding personnel, the welders that's been, that has to be qualified, welding procedures that has to be set, qualification, welder qualifications that has to be done correctly and be approved by appropriate personnel. We look at inspection and testing personnel. What does it mean? When you do inspection and testing at the company, how do you manage the NDT company coming into your premises? What is the questions that you have to ask the person? You have to ask him and make sure that the person that's gonna come and inspect your, your components and products are certified, they qualified. So there are certain things that you have to ask and you have to be, 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 be you have to know it. You have to look at the welding consumables. You have to look at the parent materials. Then very, very important. You have to, during the inspection and testing process and the actual welding process that's gonna take place on the shop floor. Unfortunately, that will be the only, only traceability that, will, that you can go back to once the product is in service. Should there be anything, and should anything happen to the product in service, you can come back to these traceability documents, to this actual performance parameters that you measured during the manufacturing process to be able to see, is it a, a, a process problem or is it just an incident or an accident that, that, that occurred in, in, during service? Then we look at things like calibration and validation, identification and traceability, very important. The only traceability that we can look at and what we can and what we try to see is typical weld maps. If you look at your um, pressure vessel fabrication, there will be circ welds, there will be long welds, there will be attachments all over the, 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 the vessel. And these things will have a number and a map to it. And we will be able to tell exactly what happened to each and every component that's been welded. And then lastly, there's quality records. We look at the quality records and the quality records are basically a summarizing and a summary of everything that happened during the, quality, quality, the, the, the manufacturing process that's on paper that you can go back to that if and should there be any problem, you can start doing re-engineering from that point onwards. Then how do we 
certify companies currently. If you look at the, the flow diagram, this is basically a step-by-step -step process of the certification process that we as the SIW certification is following. The yellow areas indicate the responsibilities for interventions from the client side, where they have to look and what they have to do, where the green areas indicate certain certification actions by the certification body. That will be SIW certification. You will also notice that SIW, SIW certification undertake to complete the certification process within one year from the moment of formal application by the company. And please, everybody ask the question, how long will it take to get certified? It depends on your process. It depends on your documentation that you've got in place. If you got all the documentation in place, if you've got your procedures in place, if you've got everything in place that we need to look at, certification will take far shorter than the one year. It can be done in four weeks. It can be done in eight, eight weeks, easy. And then there will be an annual surveillance audit around the same time when the certification was approved initially, and then every third year recertification will take place. So if you look at it, you will get the certification. There will be two annual surveillances in between, and there will be recertification. A question also then came up. What is the cost? The cost of certification depends on the company size. We determine between with your proposal and with your application, we will be able to see if you're a small company, a medium company, or a large company. Small company means one to four welders, five welders. Medium company means five to 10, 15 welders. Large company means well, more than 15, 20, 100 welders. That's large companies. Multiple workshops, those type of things. That, that is how we're gonna then uh, look at your, 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 your uh, application and the cost. A very important slide. ISO 3034 certified company, what does it mean today in the industry? One of the most important words that come to the front is trust. As an ISO 3034 certified company, the main objective is to be trustworthy and to convey the message of reliance, sincerity, competence, credence, assurance, commitment and integrity to the manufacturing industry. Therefore, to be certified through SIW certification is an agreement between the certification body and the certified company. And that the certification can be seen as a partnership between these two entities, which with one common goal, and that is to deliver a product of high quality, in time, at the right cost, including all these areas mentioned above to the client and or the customer. By achieving this, you as the certification company or certified company will definitely earn the trust within the industry and your end users that you work for. This is from, to me is one of the most important slides because this is where sometimes everything falls flat. As you get the certification and after the certification, you get into that mode of, you know what, everything is fine now. We can carry on as we carried on before. So we have to look at that and we have to keep trust in mind the whole time. Then to summarize what I said, by taking all the aspects covered in the in consideration, we can summarize the importance of ISO 3034 as follows. First of all, quality assurance. Quality assurance and quality control will be more obvious with the main benefit of producing an acceptable quality product. That's the main focus. Through efficient management during production, all agreed requirements will be met. Everything that you agree at the start of the project, as I said, where 
you've got the foundation of the project. What does the client want? So if you can manage that, then you will be able to produce a quality product at the end of the day. Secondly, cost and time savings. Cost and, one of the major cost saving benefits by having a complete quality management system is the elimination of repair work after final inspection. These manufactured projects, if you have to do any rework on them, can cost you up to three to five times the initial production costs. Nobody look at that. Everybody says, no, we can repair that, do that, do that. If you take all the time spent onto these repair work and rework time and rework costs, it will cost you three to, three to five, five times the initial cost of production. The possible gaps and miscommunication between the quality department and the production department can be avoided as there will be clear instructions and procedures to follow. This, this is one thing. There's things to have and things to produce. If the people can see and they know exactly what the other one, then we can have a total project of product. The outsourced component to subcontractors can be managed more efficiently as the requirements will be understood and managed by all parties involved. So this will also then entitle the, 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 the main contractor to manage the subcontractors, to see what they do. And if they're not ISO 3834 certified, the responsible welding coordinator in charge of this system at the sub, at the contractor has to now go and manage the welding activities more closely at the subcontractors uh, workshops and then lastly we're going to increase competitiveness by producing quality products on time within a given budget the customer satisfaction will definitely improve and it will boost the confidence of the manufacturer. It will increase standing in market ads to company unique selling proposition. So you will be the preferred supplier to the end user. That is where we want to get to. And lastly, to compete with international markets via the export and import of welded products. That will also positively influence the rise of local, which is expected in the near future. I hope that this short presentation is be of value to everybody. And please, if there's any questions, you can ask the questions. Please stay safe. And don't forget to follow us on the Facebook, the Twitter and LinkedIn for daily insight and information. Or please email me at herman.potgieter at siw.co.za. You'll just need to unmute your mics if you want to um, ask Herman any questions. Hello, John. Hello, Arman. Um, I would just like to have a quick question with regards to the companies that are already certified 3034. Um, how do we tackle the issues that I find continuously in, in industry where, as you rightly have mentioned, they do not stick to the rules once they have obtained the certificate. Um, they then tend to let it fall flat and it creates all kinds of other issues. Um, eventually leading to court cases, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. John, the first thing that we, that we try to do is we want the people or the customers of that particular company, if they can come afford to the fore and tell us exactly what the problem is. Remember, we aren't, when you do surveillances, when you do audits, you work on a sample basis. You're not looking through each and every document. And you can't cover each and every document. So we look at samples. 
we look at the tendons and say, okay, now everybody is fine. What we then want the, the, the customer, if shouldn't and should there be any problem, we have to be let, they let us know, they, we, you have to let us know. We will then raise, we've got a, a complaints procedure at SIW certification. You have to register a complaint and we will take it. We take the necessary action against this. There's already two or three companies that's been suspended by, by the board because of mishaps and the not keeping to the rules and the regulations. Please, and we need, we need that feedback. Otherwise, it's a one-off feedback to the customers on, and to the industry, but nothing is coming back. We can't see the value. Okay, 100% Armand, I appreciate that. And I'll be in contact in the future as soon as we run into these sort of problems again. Thanks, John, and I'll appreciate that. Thanks for the question. Anybody else? Arman, uh, Freddy. Hello, Freddy. Hi, yes. Uh, just one question. Um, we are, uh, I'm working for an engineering contractor, but we are busy in the process getting certified by yourselves for the 3834. Um, but I would like to present this as we are mostly, we're a big ENI. Uh, con engineering contractor, we are also moving strongly into the mechanical side to present this in-house into our company because uh, they're mostly el electrical engineers and instrument engineers. Is there a possibility that we could have this uh, slideshow of information from yourselves to present to our company in-house? You're welcome. You're welcome, Freddie. You just send me a mail, please, and we make it, make it uh, available for you. Okay, thank you so much. I'm also going to record this and you can you can use the recording as well. Oh, yes, that's nice. Thank you so much. Okay, 100%. Uh, good afternoon, Herman. It's Mark Sloan here. How are you doing? Find yourself, Mark. I'm great. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was quite informative. And uh, thank you. I see you've incorporated the Sense 347 uh, new additions and the changes there in, into your presentation, yes. which is great. But I think maybe some clarity on whether or not fabricators have to have systems which are certified or they can just operate systems uh, in accordance with 3834 maybe requires a bit of clarity. Either, if not now, possibly at a later stage. We will, Mark, yes, we, we're in the process of through webinars and that's the one thing that we try to do. The, the clarification of the new rules of 347 from, from the CP and IPE committee side. We're gonna we're gonna have the same type of webinars where every all the new rules in three four seven will be explained hundred percent to the people because I think there's a lot of people out there that don't understand the the, the three four seven and how to apply. Absolutely. Absolutely, I mean historically with the twenty twelve version, it didn't discriminate or differentiate between uh, three eight three four system that you were just operating in compliance with or yeah. certified in accordance with. Yeah. Whereas now the new three four seven, it does make or cater for that. For example, non-nuclear items, you can manufacture them with a system in compliance with, but if you're manufacturing yeah. nuclear components, obviously you are required to be certified. Yes, yeah. Okay. The, 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 I'll look forward to, the, I'll look forward to for the clarity on that. I think that'll be great. And, and just teaching and uh, making the industry generally more aware. Yeah, you, you know what, if, if you look at the, 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 the applications or the ISO 3834, uh, the, the, the mandatory requirements for, for ISO 3834, in the section it also says, where in the past it says you have to have a 9001 and a 3834. That changed totally. Yeah. It was, you have to have an ISO 3834 or a system equally to the ISO 3834 that can be uh, 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 audited. And at the bottom, it says 9001 will only be effective for the companies where welding is not the major part of the process. So this is how they distinguish the two now. Okay. Okay. If I can just ask a second question, Herman, the last one. Do you, do, are you able to share with us for, for our existing uh, 3834 certified companies, what is the 
plans, if there are any, for current surveillance audits being conducted in a remote manner? Yes, yes, we will definitely do that. We already put it on the, we, we, we send an a, a email out to all the, the, the ISO 3034 companies and said we will let them know of the new processes and manner how we're going to do the surveillances. If it's remotely, they, there's certain documentation that you have to present to us so that we can do a desktop review and so forth. So, but we will communicate it with you guys. Thank you.